A body was about to be placed into the cremation chamber when, suddenly, its finger twitched. Strangely, the staff paid no attention and swiftly pushed the body into the furnace. After lighting the cremation fire, they casually left the scene. Moments later, a janitor, responsible for cleaning, heard odd noises coming from inside the furnace. At first, he thought it was his imagination, but when he moved closer to listen carefully, he realized the sounds were indeed coming from within. Without hesitation, the janitor opened the blazing furnace, but that's when the unexpected happened. The next day, Michael brought his girlfriend, Allison, and her mother to the hospital for a cosmetic surgery procedure. The hospital director seemed perfectly normal, continuing to welcome patients. However, as a doctor himself, Michael sensed that something was off. There were no preliminary examinations, yet the surgery was set to proceed immediately, which contradicted his medical knowledge. Allison, on the other hand, thought he was just overly anxious and reassured him, suggesting he take a walk and relax, assuring him that the surgery would be over soon. Michael decided to wander around the hospital. While walking, he suddenly heard strange noises coming from a nearby room. Curious, he pushed open the door and saw a woman lying in bed, clearly in pain. She had a mask on her face, and though she was trying to speak, only broken, strange sounds came out. Without thinking, Michael quickly removed her mask, but what he saw next filled him with terror. Just then, Daniel, a security guard from the neighboring room, heard the commotion and rushed in. Both men were horrified by the gruesome scene before them and immediately bolted out of the room. Michael, in a panic, ran back to the operating room, desperate to stop the surgery. His frantic behavior confused everyone, and they believed he was causing unnecessary trouble. An argument ensued, and in the chaos, a nurse accidentally injected Michael's hand with anesthetic. Within seconds, he lost consciousness and collapsed. Meanwhile, the zombie that had escaped from the hospital room began to roam the halls. Michael eventually regained consciousness and rushed back to the operating room, determined to take Allison away. The surgeon and the nurses, growing impatient with Michael's erratic behavior, decided to leave the room. Michael quickly explained the situation to Allison. At first, she was skeptical, but as they exited the operating room, they saw the hospital in full emergency evacuation mode. The elevator was malfunctioning, and a crowd of people had gathered in panic at the elevator doors. A chubby man walked by, saying he had seen someone going crazy and eating people. Before he could finish, the hospital suddenly lost power, and the emergency lights flickered on. The frightened crowd grew even more panicked, rushing toward the stairwell. At that moment, zombies began closing in from behind, and the stairwell became a scene of chaos. As Michael and Allison tried to descend, they realized that zombies were also wreaking havoc on the floors below. At this moment, Michael and Allison were still not fully aware of the gravity of the situation. They were frantically searching for Allison's mother's room when they stumbled upon a horrifying scene. A zombie was feasting on a helpless victim. Horrified, the couple turned and sprinted away, but the zombie quickly gave chase. In desperation, Michael grabbed a nearby metal stand and tried to fend off the zombie. However, as he raised the stand, it accidentally struck an exposed wire overhead. The powerful electric shock knocked him unconscious, and he collapsed heavily onto the floor. Seeing Michael fall, Allison believed he was beyond saving and made a split-second decision to leave him behind. With the zombie still in pursuit, Allison dashed into a nearby operating room, where a doctor was in the middle of performing a liposuction procedure on a patient. The zombie burst into the room, immediately attacking the doctor. Chaos erupted as screams filled the air. In her panic, Allison accidentally switched on the liposuction machine, causing the patient on the operating table to inflate like a balloon. Just as she managed to escape from the operating room, the inflated patient exploded behind her. Allison, still shaken, continued her frantic run through the halls. As she turned a corner, she spotted her unconscious mother in one of the rooms. She quickly swapped out her mother's hospital gown and began pushing her on the bed, hoping to escape the nightmare. However, as they made their way down the corridor, they encountered a half-bodied zombie. Though missing its lower half, the creature moved with disturbing speed, quickly closing in on them. Allison, filled with dread, pushed her mother into a nearby room. But in the chaos, the noise startled her mother awake. Just as her mother regained consciousness, the relentless zombie burst into the room and bit into her mother's leg. At that critical moment, Daniel, who had been hiding in the room, stepped in and swiftly dealt with the zombie, saving Allison and her mother. Meanwhile, Michael regained consciousness, staggering through the blood-soaked corridors of the hospital, 
where bodies lay scattered everywhere. Disoriented and horrified, he wandered into a specimen room. Inside, various preserved specimens were displayed, but something about them felt eerie. As Michael curiously examined the displays, one of the specimens suddenly opened its eyes. Startled, he knocked over a jar, shattering it. To his shock, the specimen inside began to reanimate, transforming into a terrifying creature. Without wasting another second, Michael bolted from the room. In his panic, he accidentally stumbled into the director's office, where he found the hospital director and an assistant hurriedly trying to destroy some documents and equipment. Though suspicious of their actions, Michael knew he couldn't survive alone. Reluctantly, he decided to join forces with them. As they continued moving forward, someone suddenly rushed out of the shadows and knocked Michael to the ground. It turned out to be Daniel, who had mistaken him for a zombie. Thankfully, Michael wasn't seriously hurt, and amid the chaos, he managed to reunite with his girlfriend. When the hospital director saw Allison's mother, he immediately recognized that she, too, was infected with the virus. Without hesitation, he grabbed an axe, determined to eliminate the potential threat. However, just as he was about to strike, Allison's mother coughed violently and spat directly into his face. To everyone's horror, the director had now become infected as well. To avoid turning into a zombie, the hospital director made a desperate decision to develop a vaccine before he fully mutated. He worked quickly, and soon the vaccine was created. However, instead of slowing down the virus, the injection only accelerated the transformation process. Realizing his time was running out, the director, on the verge of fully mutating, finally revealed the horrifying truth about the outbreak. It turned out that the zombie virus had been his own creation. In an attempt to develop an anti-aging serum that would keep women youthful forever, the formula went terribly wrong, leading to the outbreak. The zombie Michael had accidentally released earlier was the very first test subject, patient zero. Before the director could finish his confession, his assistant, wielding an axe, struck him down from behind, showing that she, too, had her own dark motives. The group was left in shock. Meanwhile, Allison's mother had now fully transformed into a zombie. Despite her deep sorrow and reluctance, Allison knew that the creature before her was no longer her mother. With tears streaming down her face, she took the heartbreaking step of putting her mother to rest. The entrance was already swarming with zombies, and the group knew they had to leave quickly. However, the back door was locked, and the key was nowhere to be found. As tension grew, Michael had an idea. He decided to make a makeshift chemical bomb. Just as he was about to place it, Allison calmly walked up and effortlessly slid the door open. Michael, who had hoped to impress his girlfriend with his cleverness, found himself awkwardly deflated. The group quickly moved to the rooftop, where they planned to cross over to the next building using a wooden plank. Unfortunately, one of the doctors lost his balance and fell to his death, but the rest of the group managed to cross safely. They found themselves inside a building filled with zombies, leaving the garbage chute as their only escape route. Michael and Allison slid down the chute first, followed closely by Daniel. However, Daniel seized this moment to blackmail the assistant, demanding hush money. It turned out that the assistant had been the mastermind behind the anti-aging drug experiment all along. With zombies fast approaching, the assistant had no choice but to reluctantly agree to Daniel's demands. As the group exited the garbage chute, they heard a cry for help. They quickly moved towards the sound and managed to rescue a girl by fighting off the zombies. However, the female assistant had her own plans. She seized the opportunity to slip into a nearby room, pushing a zombie towards the door. Then, she called Daniel over for a discussion. When Daniel entered the room and opened the door, he inadvertently triggered a trap set by the assistant. To keep her secret safe, the assistant attempted to kill Daniel. Enraged by the betrayal, Daniel reacted swiftly and eliminated her on the spot. After tending to his injuries, Daniel was confronted by the others who arrived in response to the commotion. He lied, claiming that the assistant had been bitten by a zombie and the group, not suspecting anything amiss. They continued their search for an exit and eventually reached a storage room. Through a window, they saw flashing lights outside, and the girl identified them as military rescue teams. Without hesitation, she ran outside to seek help, only to be gunned down by the soldiers. It became clear that the military's goal was to eliminate all potential sources of infection. With tear gas canisters being thrown in, the three survivors were forced to retreat and find another escape route. Soon, they discovered a sewer pipe, but zombies were hot on their heels. Allison found a manhole cover and attempted to push it open to escape, but soldiers were positioned above. The soldiers promptly ran over the manhole cover with a truck, 
crushing Allison's fingers in the process, causing her to scream in agony. After a quick bandage, they had no choice but to keep looking for another exit. Eventually, they found another manhole cover, but the stairs leading up were too high. They decided to send Allison up first. She climbed the stairs with all her might and managed to open the manhole cover. This time, they finally found safety outside. Daniel followed her up the ladder. Just as Daniel was climbing up the manhole cover, a zombie suddenly appeared. Michael struggled to survive and threw a rope up to him, but Daniel had no intention of pulling him up. Michael noticed Daniel's abdominal wound, clearly inflicted by a zombie bite. Without saying much, Daniel silently closed the manhole cover and lied to Allison, claiming that Michael had been bitten. Allison believed the lie, and the two of them managed to sneak into a car and escape from the hospital. As they drove, Allison began to notice Daniel's odd behavior, especially after seeing his wound. Daniel eventually admitted that he was infected with the zombie virus, but wanted to fulfill a small wish before fully transforming. At the crucial moment, Allison found a screwdriver and, without hesitation, stabbed Daniel in the kidney. She then pushed him out of the car. By now, Daniel had completely transformed into a zombie. Allison quickly started the car, accelerated, and drove away, continuing her escape. Meanwhile, Michael, trapped in the sewer, was surrounded by zombies. In a desperate moment, he used the chemical bomb he had made earlier. A massive explosion echoed around, and Michael miraculously survived, clutching the engagement ring he had prepared for Allison. Michael staggered to the roadside, just in time to see Allison driving up. However, Allison mistook Michael for a zombie and didn't hesitate to slam on the gas. By the time she realized the person in front of her was Michael, it was too late. The car lost control and crashed into a tree. Michael died instantly, and Allison, distracted by the crash, was unable to prevent the disaster. It's truly tragic that none of the main characters survived in this film. Did they somehow offend the director?